Welcome to another episode of Eric White Whiskey Studies and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Glen Elgin 18 year old cash drink single malt scotch whiskey. But before I do, I'm gonna tell you about the history of a Glen Elgin distillery and give you my notes on this whiskey. Glen Elgin Distillery is located in Fogwat Moray in the Speyside region of Scotland. The distillery uses the water which comes from the springs of Milbuie's Lock near the distillery. From 1898 to 1900, Glen Elgin Distillery was built by a partnership of William Simpson, a former manager of Glen Farkless Distillery, and James Carl. During construction, Pattison's, the Leith Blender, went into liquidation, taking with it the market for malt whiskey. Glen Elgin ended up much smaller than planned and would be the last distillery built in the Speyside region until 1958 when Tormor Distillery was built. In 1901, the Glen Elgin Distillery was auctioned to the Glen Elgin Glenlivet Distillery Company and was mothballed. In 1906, the wine producer, J.J. Blanche and Company bought the Glen Elgin Distillery and production resumed. In 1929, J.J. Blanche died and the Glen Elgin Distillery was put up for sale again. In 1930, Scottish malt distillers bought the distillery and the license went to White Horse Distillers. In 1992, the Glen Elgin Distillery closed for refurbishing an installation of new stills. In 1995, Glen Elgin Distillery production restarted in September. The Glen Elgin 18 year old cast strength space side single malt scotch whiskey. It was aged in ex bodega European oak butts for 18 years. It is non chill filtered, has natural color, spotted at 54.8% alcohol by volume, and sells for around $246 in my neighborhood. So you don't hear a whole lot of chatter about Glen Elgin Distillery uh, among whiskey tubers. Searching around, mostly what I see is the Glen Elgin 12 year old. But other than that, still don't hear a lot of people talking about Glen Elgin uh, Distillery located, uh, as you saw there, up there in Speyside. So this, in a sense, is not a bottle of uh, single malt scotch. It is a bottle and a half of single malt scotch whiskey. It was fairly closed when I first opened it up, but give it some time to breathe and it really opens up. Uh, but it tasted neat. It's as if somebody was rubbing their feet on the carpet, you know? Someone was rubbing their feet on the carpet and then they came up and touched your cheek and you got a static shock as you were taking uh, your first sip of the whiskey. That is the way this is. It's not just a merely a bite uh, or a tingle, it is a shock. So this is a whiskey that greatly benefits from water or, uh, and I've been experimenting a little bit, another way to add water, rather than just take a teaspoon or a dropper or something like that, actually put in, I know some people are gonna call me a heretic for doing this, actually take a couple cubes, one, two, and drop them in there and then let it sit there. Don't start drinking it cold. Don't start drinking it cold. Let the ice melt into the whiskey, just two medium sized cubes. Let it melt into the whiskey and assume room temperature. Now you say, Eric, why would you do that and not just put a couple teaspoons or tablespoons of water in it? I don't know why. It seems to slowly infuse as it melts infuse into the whiskey and become much more intermingled with the whiskey than if you just put a couple teaspoons or tablespoons into it or a couple droppers if you put if your main goal is to bring down the abv now if you put just a couple drops that'll diffuse oils and open up aromas and flavors but as i said before because of that sharp tingling or that electric shock uh, 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 in my jaws and my palate. My goal isn't just to have it open up a little bit more, but to tame it a little bit to make it more approachable, uh, <laughs> a little bit more uh, friendly. And of course, in the process, end up extending uh, the bottle. 
And as it melts, it only takes a couple minutes and we assume room temperature, what I have found is this whiskey is absolutely fantastic. Five minutes later. So in a sense, what are you doing by allowing the ice to melt and then assume room temperature is you are slowly bringing down the ABV and diffusing uh, that, that sharp bite. It's slowly assimilating into the whiskey. Is there a difference between doing that and just put two tablespoons? I don't know, experiment at home and see how you like it. It's summertime here, it's summertime here, so even if the whiskey is a little cooler, I don't mind. Now, what I'm getting on the nose is a very, very, very intense maltiness, but I'm also getting, if you're ever gonna make a, an ice cream sundae, you know, with the banana, strawberries, maybe you have some chocolate syrup, but you get a caramel syrup that you're gonna put over on your ice cream, I get something like that. Caramelized apples, caramelized pears, cinnamon, loads of vanilla, uh, creme brulee, a little bit of tropical note, uh, dried pineapple, a hint of floral notes on the palate. Now, it still has a little bit of a tingle, but it's a spice tingle. Um, the spice is barrel spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, a lot of vanilla. I get those apples, I get those pears, caramelized apples. I get that caramel syrup there. I get the dried pineapple. It has eh, a moderate uh, progression from the front and the middle into the finish. It's pretty much the same all the way go through. You know, a little bit more spice, three quarters of the way back, and it has a real long finish. I'm still tasting it now. Uh, it has a nice silky uh, texture to it. Not, obviously, not the most complex whiskey in the world, but what is there I really, really, really like? If I was tasting this blind, I might think it was a first fill bourbon cask, but it has more of a toffee note. I was gonna add toffee to that. More of a toffee note than I would get from just a normal first fill bourbon cask. Now, I like the whiskey. The pri quality price ratio is a little challenging. This is a really expensive bottle of whiskey with a, a big ass box that I really don't need taking up space on my shelf. I'd rather have a smaller box or a tube rather than something that's gonna take up the size of actually two bottles on my shelf. It's a nice, you know, as a gift, it's, it's a real nice presentation, but uh, absolutely uh, unnecessary. What I'm gonna give in terms of score, I'm gonna call a solid 89 points, solid 89 points. To get over 90, I would want uh, more variation uh, through the transitions, uh, but in terms of length of finish, mouth feel, and all that, it's, it's a really, really nice whiskey. Biggest challenge is there are a lot of whiskeys out there of similar quality uh, that uh, are, are, far, are far less. I would check out, uh, for example, I would check out the Glen Mori 18 year old. Uh, this is a first fill uh, bourbon cask and it's about $110, $110, so it's far less than that. Also comes in a fancy box, so not, not as big as that one. Uh, but in terms of quality price ratio, I think this one blows it away. And this one is at 47.2% alcohol off lime, a little bit more uh, approachable. And as you can see, I really, really like this one. Uh, I think this is actually probably one of the best first fill bourbon cast uh, whiskeys that are out there. And uh, Glen Mori seems to be one of the better buys out there on the market. All right, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it. If you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, Slanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.